Hi there, and welcome to Working With Footage. In this class, student editors Sean and Elijah will have a chance to walk you through the basics of getting going with your Premiere editing software. To begin, I'm going to show you how to import your footage. From there, I'll show you the simple aspect of how to name your files. We'll set up your bins so that you can organize your footage according to shot, subject, location, and whatever else you might want to use to categorize it. We'll create sequences and string outs so our clips will flow together into a more cohesive scene. And we'll export our videos for transcription later on. And we'll make selects from our B-roll footage. Firstly, we'll look at importing your footage. A couple of things to keep in mind is you want to have your project already open before you start importing your footage. And then you also want to have a general idea of the location in which your footage is stored on your hard drive, on your computer. That way it makes it a lot easier to drag your footage into your project and start editing. First step to importing your footage is to make sure you know where the footage you're trying to import is saved on your computer. In this case, I have it open on a window, which I can drag right here. And to import my footage, I simply select the folder that I want to import. I hold it, click and drag, and drop it within Premiere. Premiere then imports the files as they were saved in the folder. It creates a new bin and it shows it right there. When it comes to file naming, there's no rule, but you should probably have your own convention and try to keep it consistent. This will make it easier for yourself and your editors moving forward to have a sort of system so everyone's in sync. So right now we have an example of a complete project that is open. And if we look over to the left, we notice that our bins are completely and properly organized. You notice the consistency in the numbering of the bins. And you notice that we have everything organized according to the different type of footage that it is. So we have the cuts or organized in one folder and with subfolders in those so we can go directly to whatever it is that we're looking for because we know where to find it. And that just makes the editing process a lot easier. Let's say I wanted to find a specific interview. Well, I know where to look because everything is labeled and everything is organized. And because we've kept consistency across the entire project, I know that if I wanted to find an interview, all I needed to do is go to the interviews folder, look for the specific interview that I want, find the clip, then I have it open right here, ready to import into my sequence. When it comes to setting up your bins, all you need to know is that file structure does not equal bin structure is the bin structure is determined by the type of product itself. So basically, bins are folders within Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, useful, again, to categorize all of your footage. You can categorize it by location, shot type, uh, subject, etc. cetera. Um, there's a few different ways we can view this. Um, so in the bottom of our screen here, we can see that there is three different icons. We have the list view, which, you know, shows it as a list, uh, one thing after another, all the different file types. Uh, we also have the icon view, which shows the thumbnail of the icon of the image or the file, in this case, just a folder image. And then we also have the uh, freeform view, which is similar to the icon view, except you can drag and drop things as you want and play around with it a little more, more customizable. But uh, for our sake, we're just going to stick to the simple icon view for now. So we're going to go back to that middle one. So all this is really just for our viewing purposes. Uh, it's really up to your personal preferences. But uh, now that we're inside of our footage here, you see we have all of these different types of shots. We have our long shots, which are wider, show more landscapes. We have more close-ups. And then we have something in between, what we call medium shots. Uh, so maybe we want to organize these into different folders, into different bins, so they're easier to access later, and we don't need to go running around to find each one. We'll know exactly where they're located. So down here, we can click on the folder-looking icon to create a new bin, and then title it according to how we want to categorize it. So in this case, we will create something, say, uh, long shots.
do it again, we can create some medium shots. That's the bin where we'll keep all of our shots where you have someone, you know, about waist, uh, waist up. And we'll do it one more time and create a bin just for close-ups. So once that's done, we can go ahead and just start dragging our various uh, uh, footage files into the appropriate bins. So just by looking at them, we can see some are wide, some are close up, etc. Um, so we can just click on this close up here, uh, drag it and drop it right into the close up bin. And it's now stored in there. Uh, in addition, if we want to select multiple, we can click on one and then hold either shift or uh, control, depending on if you're a Mac or a Windows user, and you can select multiple at once and drag it in and drop it. And now that we've done that with close-ups, we can go ahead and just do that with all of them. We can do it with the uh, long shots and with the medium shots. So I'm going to take a minute here and just go ahead and do all of that. So yeah, now you have all of these bins. They all have the unique type of footage you need. Um, and like I say, it's just going to be a lot more efficient to use moving forward, uh, whether you're editing or someone else's. Next, we'll be looking at string outs and sequences. One thing you have to keep in mind before we get a bit too confused is that a string out is a type of sequence. And it's just the first step in bringing your edit to life. So to create a new sequence, what we want to do is select any random clip uh, within our bin, right click on the clip, go all the way to the option that says new sequence from clip, click that, and we have our sequence created right there. The reason we do that is because we want our footage to match our sequence in terms of settings. So when we right click and we say new sequence from clip, we're creating a sequence whose settings matches the settings of our footage. The other option you have when creating a sequence is clicking the new item button at the bottom of the window, at the bottom of the project panel right here, create, uh, click on sequence. And the difference between uh, the first method we discussed and this method is in this case, we will have to know exactly what settings we use to shoot our footage so that we can select the actual preset that matches uh, the footage or we can put in our settings manually. So it's just a lot easier to right click on the footage and then say create a new sequence from the clip. Another thing you can do to uh, create a sequence easily as well as assemble the footage within the sequence is select all your footage, right click on any of the clips that were selected, um, and then select new clip, new sequence from clip, the same option that we did before. And what that does is it creates a new sequence with the settings that matches our footage, but at the same time, it adds all the clips within that sequence so we can scrub through everything that we shot within the sequence. Again, to scrub, I'm just... Um, click in and drag in on the time indicator, the pointer head right here. And then we can scrub through our footage and see exactly what we shot. And we have a general idea of what we want to use and what we don't want to use for our final edit. When it comes to making your B-roll selects, you can do this either by sifting through the bin or scrubbing through your actual sequences. There's no real hard rule to how you select your best footage. It's just going to be what you get comfortable with. But ultimately, everyone knows that when you get good at these tools, you start coming up with shortcuts that make it a lot more efficient. So start learning your hotkeys, and I think it'll save you a lot of time. So before we go into adding the B-roll, I just want to introduce you to the basic tools and the layout that you need to edit videos in Premiere. Now that you have all your videos organized, we'll go straight into creating a new sequence. So I hit the New Item button. Hit sequence, uh, call this sample sequence, sample SEQ for short, and I'll hit OK. And right now I'm not too worried about the settings because we'll change those later. So now that I have the sequence created, I'll go straight into my bins and start adding the clips. So you notice that there's four main windows here. So the first one is the bin, the, the project window which has all the bins. The next one is the source monitor. Right next to the source monitor, we have the program monitor. And then finally, we have the timeline. 
So if we go into our project monitor, the panel with the bins, we select a shot, we can double click on the shot and it's going to open up in our source monitor. So in our source monitor, what we can do is select the in and the out points of the clip. What those are, it's just the specific points at which you want the clip to start and you want the clip to end. In the cases that you don't necessarily want to add the entire clip to your sequence. So I'll select my end point here by hitting I on the keyboard. Move that indicator, the little pointer head right here, to the end, the part which I want the clip to end on. And then I hit O on my keyboard and I've selected the in and the out point. And then next I need to move this from the source monitor to the timeline. That way it's visible in the program monitor. So the timeline is the actual video itself. So I click and drag this. And then I drop it into the sequence. And you notice that it now appears in the program monitor. So if I play this, this is the video itself. If I had to export the video and finalize it right here, what would be exported is the video or the clips in the timeline. So I go next and I add another clip. I just click and drag, double click this, open it up in the source monitor. And let's say this time I want to add the entire clip. In that case, I don't select an in and an out point, but instead I just click and drag on that. And then I drop it in. So I'll zoom out a little bit. And to zoom out, I'm just hitting the minus key on the keyboard. And to zoom in, I'm hitting the plus key on the keyboard. You can also click and drag on the bar at the bottom to zoom out or zoom in. So I'm just going to zoom out. And I'll add one more clip. So I'll go into my close-up shots and I'll select any clip. But this time, I won't open the clip in the source monitor. I'll instead just directly click and drag on the clip from the project monitor and I'll drop it in my timeline. And right now I have three clips in my timeline and if I exported the video, this is what would be exported. Additionally, you can cut clips within Premiere and how you do that is by hitting C on your keyboard or by clicking on the razor blade or the cut tool right here. And once you have that, you can hover your mouse over the specific section of the clip that you want to cut so if I zoom in here, I'll notice that the waveform here, the waveform is just the audio, the shape that the different audio makes. So I'll notice that the waveform on the audio layers, so the top layers are the video layers, the ones that are labeled with a V and then a number. And then the layers at the bottom are the audio layers, the ones that are labeled with an A and a number. So if I look at my audio layer, audio layer 1, I'll notice that the waveform here is a bit low, so it's lower than the rest of the clips then I know that there isn't much happening in this section of the clip. So I can hit C on my keyboard. Again, C is the brings up the razor blade tool, or I can click on the razor blade tool on the toolbar right here. I select the part of the clip that I want to cut out. I click on it. And then I have divided my clip into two sections. So the initial section, and then this section that I just cut out. And then I can click on this to select it and then hit delete on my keyboard. Alternatively, I can click on this, right click, and then say report delete. What that does is just deletes the clips and it closes up the space. But what most likely you use is just selecting the clip itself, hitting delete on your keyboard. So you click the delete button on your keyboard. And what that does is it gets rid of the clip, but it has this space in between them. So I can click and drag this clip and bring it next to the other one. And that way we don't have that space. Or I could just click on the space in between the clips and delete that. So those are the basic things that you need to know in terms of adding clips into your sequence and your timeline. Moving those clips around, cutting clips as you please, as well as deleting clips that you don't want to be in your sequence anymore. So if I play this, it moves from one clip to another in the same sequence.